You knew that was coming. Got to make some plays. Weaknesses exposed, lessons learned. Go back to your December list. All of them were accomplished. And Chris Paul. It's all next on Tip Off. Boom, 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 boom. Really should be playing taps. Boom, 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 boom. Drums don't have quite the same oomph. Boom, 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 boom. The season is over. Du, 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 du. The emptiness is coming. Du, 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 du. The friends are gone. Hey, how you doing? Uh, funny day. I was really bummed last night afterwards. Feel all right today. Uh, but that's what happens. The season ends. Uh, it's crazy. You just live your life. Uh, I think as a fan this year was 66 games, and as fast as we played them, uh, we it felt like we played every night. I, I'm sure your emotions are, are very similar. Uh, for me personally, it's what it is, is simply that uh, this is – you know, this is what I've been doing, and uh, this is who I've spent my time with, and I've got to know these guys pretty well. And, I, you know, I don't kid myself to think that a lot of them care a great deal about who I am, but uh, we definitely were spending, t- you know, that's what you're doing. And now it's over. Uh, locker clear out today, which is uh, make sure you tune to 1320K fam because uh, it's pretty good radio. And, and then they're done. And you see some of them in October. And you see most of them uh, around the season again when they play for other teams. And a few of them, I'm not sure if they'll be in the NBA next year. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty crazy uh, kind of passage of time. No, no one season leads to the next, though. Uh, they're all separate capsules. Uh, players can grow and develop, but teams are, 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 are always different, and this one uh, certainly will be as well. Uh, first off, uh, I harangue and complain about the comments on the Twitter timeline. I probably should uh, take a moment and thank everyone. I try to personally do that. I don't know if I'll get that done after the uh, very nice deluge of comments last night. Uh, so thank you to everyone for, for all the nice comments uh, about, the, about the work that uh, we've put in this year. Uh, it's been an f- interesting year for... Me, we transitioned off the radio and and on to doing these podcasts and these tip offs and, um, you know, from the first time I took the interviewed for the play by play job three plus years ago, uh, this is kind of what I presented that I thought it would could be a uh, twenty four hour a day, three hundred and sixty five day a year connection, uh, and we'll see uh, the off season plan is I will probably do a bunch of player evaluations, summaries between now and um, next few weeks. And then I will probably do some draft pick stuff, but I I don't know when. I'm going to go on vacation in June for a little while. So that will limit some of that, and we don't have picks. But I will still probably do some of that. I like doing it. I actually think it helps my play-by-play an awful lot uh, because then I know who everybody is. Uh, so that the uh, player season reviews and uh, draft pick analysis will take place from here to uh, draft. Then July will be free agency. We'll monitor it heavily here on tip off, which will continue um, as well as uh, on locked on sports on Twitter and on weareutahjazz.com. And then uh, we do hit the dead time in August and September. Last year, I did not do a good job of reviewing every team for my prep for the season, so I will be doing that this year uh, and doing a much better job of that. And I, that'll probably lead to posts. So that's kind of the plan. That gets us to September. Well, that'll take August and September because there's that many teams, and it takes a long time to do a team. Uh, and also we'll do some other podcasts. Uh, keep to touch. I mean, I'm going to do some different things. I've got a really good friend who I've gotten to know as a Hollywood writer. We'll chuck in with him. Ian Furness and I will continue two guys on the 12. uh, Various things of that sort as um, the year goes on. Let's get to it, though. Uh, When we were preparing, uh, uh, you know, I was walking to the bus in San Antonio before game one. uh, And I won't say who I was with because I don't have his permission. 
But we had both done our prep. And the look both of us gave each other was, is there any way we can win a game? And the answer evidently was no. The amount of times where we really did nothing wrong and they made a play was stunning. The Spurs are playing at a very, very high level. They're better than we are. A lot better. We're not a title contender. Never for one second should have anyone thought we were a title contender. Uh, you know, oh, we should have gotten one. Really? Like, if they're that much better than us, why should have we gotten one? No one's gotten one from them in 14 games. Only one team, the Lakers, who are on the edge of being a title contender, has gotten them on the road in 24 games. So, we just, they're they're rolling right now. And that, that run they went on with their bench last night, that's incredible. Who has a bench that does that? Uh, it makes it boring to tip your hat, but you know what? We used to do this to people. You know, it was a pretty good Laker team that was developing and young and coming with Shaq and and uh, Kobe, and we swept them, right? We were veteran, ready, on fire, ready to go. The other one is I would take you back in, in jazz history for a moment, if I could, to I believe the year was 1989. And I, I wonder sometimes when I when I see these things, uh, what how it would have been in this day and age. Uh, the year prior, the Jazz had gotten to the Western Conference Finals. Oh, excuse me, they got in the Western Conference Semifinals. And we didn't hit the Conference Finals till the year we played Portland. And that year was a Carl Malone, Thurl Bailey, John Stockton team. I believe it was the first year Stockton ever started. Uh, it was Malone, Thurl's fourth year, uh, Carl's second, Malone's, uh, John's, or Carl's second and John's third. We hit the conference finals. Then, and then the, that's the next year Jerry takes over, and they get swept in the first round of the playoffs, despite being 51 and 31 and finishing winning the division. They lose in the first round. They went losing actually in the first round for the next two years before finally in 91 92 getting to the conference finals. So it, it's a journey. Getting swept is not the end of the world, but they're still, you know, and the best of. Talent did it. Uh, that was obviously the Jazz were not the greatest of playoff teams there um, for some time as they, I would say, underachieved in the playoffs with some regularity as they just, it took a long time for them to click in and, and figure out what playoff basketball uh, was going to be. One of the questions, which I, I do find, the fact that we actually have this debate I find disappointing that basketball is at a point where we discuss whether trying to win was the right thing. The system is definitely askew when doing that. I don't think there's any question. Uh, Gordon Hayward's going to have a tough offseason, but there's no question he got a rude reminder of how much work he has done. Not that he would have lost that, but April, March and April could have given him a false confidence. And there's something, I think, to be said about not having a false confidence. The Golden State Warriors, till this year, have always finished the year very well and, and given themselves this false confidence. Hey, there's no mystery of how far away we are. Some other teams can say we closed well. We did hey, we, we closed well. We did all that. We exceeded expectations. We got handed to us. They're a lot better than we are. We're not there yet. It's going to take some time. Uh, but these guys... Once the sting of the last few days is over, which, you know, I'm not sure that sting was actually that sharp for some of them. Uh, it's time. I talked to Derek for a little while. I was like, point proven. He's like, hey, just had to be patient. Derek's done it. He's ready to go. You know, this becomes, uh, I've told the story about sitting with Gordon uh, during his rookie year and his frustration and the lack of defense and lack of playing hard by the team at that point. And I said, just, you know, you'll, it'll be your team here at some point. No question. We inched closer 
uh, toward that even in this series and in this season. Our weaknesses got exposed in this series. Uh, we can't shoot from the outside at all. It's got to get fixed. Uh, we do not have any playmakers. It's got to get fixed. Probably have to adjust as much as the top 10 offensive team this year. You don't want to adjust too much, but probably have to adjust the offensive system a little bit to allow for those two things to happen as well. You know, so much of us pound it down low into the post. And I think that's, you know, that's who we are. But then when you're pounding it down low in the post, somehow you also have to open up the floor enough to allow people to make plays. And we just don't have any playmakers. Excuse me. Allergies. Uh, so I think, you know, we, we saw what's wrong with us. We also, as I have attested, uh, I think, and I haven't looked at the numbers yet from hoop data, but I think we held the Spurs to one of their worst offensive nights of the year last night. So when you consider that, I think you're you also are seeing something else that we're going to be a great defensive team with favors on the floor for 35 minutes a night. You know these guys really defended a fabulous and superior defensive team last night at a very high level. Uh, the Spurs last night their offensive efficiency was 92.6, uh, which I think has got to be one of their lowest of the year. The Spurs for a season were a 108.5. Um, and they have not had a offensive efficiency game below what they had last night with their roster. They did against us the first time, but they didn't have their players. Uh, since Boston, with about 20 games left, They had a game against Chicago where they lost early in the year. Uh, they beat Memphis on a night where they did not have the offense rolling. And they had a bad game against Orlando. But if we think about that for a second, San Antonio had their fifth worst offensive game of the year last night. We weren't able to beat them, which tells us that we still have some offensive problems. But it also tells you where this basketball team is going. And when you hear who it was that shut them down, it's Boston, it's Chicago, it is Memphis, and it's Orlando. Those are the better defensive teams in the NBA. And one of the reasons why I think the Spurs are probably in pretty good shape is unless they see Memphis, who was the number one defensive team in the Western Conference this year, I don't know that they play a team defensively who will do that to them. But the fact that the Jazz in a playoff series did that to them and put them at that level defensively shows you where we can go defensively with favors on the floor. Uh, the season as a whole, boy, this could get long. Uh, I'll try to corral this a little bit, and we'll have things to discuss for the next few days. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to write up a bunch of this stuff at weareutahjazz.com. But if you go back uh, at the beginning of the year and and list the accomplishments that this team had, uh, it's they they nailed just about every single one of them, and that I think is maybe the most important thing to the season. Probably the single most important thing that happened this season is that Tyrone Corbin established himself as the head coach and leader of this franchise. He had a very difficult balancing act. He had a very difficult circumstance with no summer league and no training camp. And I think unquestionably he established himself as the leader of this franchise that he found a way to get the most out of these guys. The team, without question, improved as the year went on. He got challenged. He won that challenge. Uh, someone tried to usurp his power. They got banished. 
Those are important things. In a lot of franchises, you don't know what happens in that circumstance. San Antonio, in Utah, there's no doubt on what happens in those circumstances. That the organization, the leadership, the coaches are the ones who stay in charge in those circumstances. And that's what happened. There's no question that Hayward and Favors are better today and more ready to take this franchise to the next step than they were when the year started. Now, that draft class as a whole had a lot of problems this year. It took a long time for everybody in that draft class universally across the board to get going this year. Evan Turner still hasn't really necessarily gotten going, but he had a better second half than a first half. Derek Favors, a better second half than a first half. John Wall just had a disappointing season. Wesley Johnson's just not good. Epe Udo hasn't gotten going. Greg Monroe was one of the few that started the year well. All Paul George started the year fairly well. Monroe and George were the two that started the year well. The rest of the players in that draft class who are having any impact on games, Evan Turner, Derek Favors, DeMarcus Cousins, Gordon Hayward, John Wall, Patrick Patterson, Ed Davis in Toronto, who you don't know of because he played in Davis. Avery Bradley was fabulous in Boston. Those players all had an impact in the second half of the season because of the fact that they didn't have the training camp. That's what they, they were the ones who needed that. For all the discussion of minutes played and things of that sort, Gordon Hayward is seventh in that draft class in minutes played. And Derek Favors is 11th. Could Favors be higher? Sure. That'd be nice. But I also think if you're truthful about Favors, we saw a lot of his weaknesses as well as his strengths. He shot defensively. He alters everything. He's And that's where he's going to be great. But he did shoot 48% for the field in this series. Which isn't really good enough. He shot 59% from the free throw line. He didn't beat a lot of guys with any of his offensive games. He still has a lot of work that needs to be done. He's cashed $8 million. If he does it right, he cashes $108 million in his next contract and makes that developmental step. But if we watched him closely in this series, it's not a finished product. He hasn't scratched the surface. As someone said to me last night, he hasn't scratched the surface. He's got still got a lot of, of work to do. You know, you look at other goals and accomplishments of the season, Paul Millsap wanted to prove he could be a power forward on a playoff team. He did it. By the end of the year, he'd lost his job, become a small forward. And Favors is ready to go because Favors is just a different beast than Paul. One was a third pick, one was a second round pick, and there's a reason for that. Al Jefferson wanted to prove he could play on a winner. He did it. He didn't have a very good playoff series. A bunch of his quotes left you wondering where he is mentally. That may have been the worst matchup for him possibly. 26 matchups now, 25 matchups now against Duncan, 1 in 24. The bottom last thing I would say is I think the future is really, really bright. There's a lot of pieces in the puzzle. There's a lot of things that uh, look great. Uh, I love how we're going to be able to play defensively. That's I, I, why I believe we're going to win a lot of games for upcoming years. But we're missing one very important piece. And if you watch the playoffs... You'll see it every night from here on out. From the second round on, you'll see it every night. And that's the man. We don't have the man. We don't have Chris Paul making the plays he made at midnight last night. We don't have James Harden single-handedly taking over that game in Dallas. We don't have Dirk Nowitzki carrying the Mavericks to a championship. 
And I'm not certain that I believe we have a guy on our roster that can be that guy. Favors can be dominant defensively. And if he becomes a decent low post player, I think he's got an instinct to pass, and he'll be able to create opportunities for other guys. But we don't have a guy who makes that play. And I don't know where we get it. Chris Paul was a fourth pick. Darren Williams, frankly, is one of those guys who's a third pick. James Harden is a third pick. Dirk Nowitzki should have been. It's one of those special players who can take over games, will franchises to win. It's not ju- We need some playmakers. We need some shooters. But the thing we're lacking that is going to prevent us from making well, the next step we're going to make we were a 46-7 win team. We're going to get over 50. I have no doubt. And we'll be in the mid-50s. And then how do we get to that one? You got to get that guy. And that, I don't know how we do that. But that's, there's three steps in this development. And we're getting, we're on the road. We're going to have to figure that out. I leave you with this. We talked all year long, play hard, play right, and dictate games. Those are the three steps in a developing franchise. We played hard. We played right. We dictated some games. And then we saw the Spurs. And they play harder, righter, it's not a word, and they dictated the entire series. They're great. Talk to you tomorrow because there is no offseason.